So I've decided that the internet is terrible for my self-esteem. Because on those days, it seems like when I, I'm sitting there unshowered in my favorite comfy pair of mom jeans, staring at all of those perfect Pinterest parties and those glamorous Facebook vacation photos, I can't help but feel just a little bit lame. And I have to wonder if anybody else's version of motherhood is as messy and imperfect as mine. And I wonder if there are other moms sitting out there on the back of their computer screens wondering what kind of a legacy they're leaving for their children and for their grandchildren. And if collectively, if we're wondering if our best is ever going to be enough. These doubts seem to hit me the hardest on those days when I actually try really hard and pull out the stops and do something great for my kids. And then it's still a total disaster. We had the chance to go ice skating a couple of weeks ago for my husband's work. And I was so excited that we were gonna have a chance to do something other than our boring stay at home family night. But also because I could post online that we were doing something other <laughs> than that boring stay at home family night. And maybe, just maybe, I'd look as cool as those moms not in mom jeans. Except the funny thing is, is that as soon as I left the door, that funny, cool, awesome family night went sideways. My 12-year-old was the one, only one who'd been skating before, and he helpfully explained to the kids in the car that ice skating is really cold, and you'll fall like a million times, and probably crack your head open and die. <laughs> well, this took the really giddy nine and seven-year-old straight to totally freaking out and wondering why mom was dragging us to death. The five-year-old chose to ignore everybody because in her mind, anything with ice had to be as cool as the movie Frozen and wouldn't stop singing, let it go, let it go, which made everybody really irritated, especially the really irritated to begin with 11-year-old who was mad at mom because I was making him wear jeans instead of shorts and he'd seen the Winter Olympics and nobody, I mean nobody mom, wore jeans on the ice. In the middle of this, coincidentally, our middle child actually sat in the middle seat trying to decide if he should be super excited or just ready for doom. Then our car died, one mile from the skating rink. And as all of the steam and smoke erupted out from under the hood, my 12-year-old mutters from the back seat, see, I told you skating sucks, even the car doesn't want to go. <laughs> Thank you. So the 11-year-old immediately began to campaign for us to keep walking because we were only a mile away and, you know, he was already having to wear jeans. To which I explained in excruciating mom detail lecture style that we weren't going to do that because we were not going to ditch dad on the side of the road and we don't do dangerous things like walk in the dark. All right, everybody grab your coat. We're ditching dad and walking in the dark. Turns out my husband's co-workers, who could help us get that car started, were already up at the skating rink having their awesome, not at home, stay at home family night, and no one had their phones over on. So I got to march five kids down the road, Von Trapp style, and do my best to unscare them about everything I had just sworn would happen when people were dumb enough to walk in the dark <laughs> on busy roads, and then through heavily wooded parking lots with no street lights. When we did make it to the rink, five little bodies shot up like buckshot across the ice, and it was one parent now to be in five places at once, like with the 11-year-old, who took off like a champ and managed, even in jeans, to skate as cool as those Olympic guys, or with the five-year-old, who could not skate to save her life, and hung on my neck like a goiter until I got her one of those little snappy red skating walkers and sent her off like a happy senior citizen to kind of take everyone else out at the knees. <laughs> or with the nine and the seven year olds who gave it 30 seconds of their best effort before worrying about that whole cold and falling and head cracking thing and ended up crying and pouting the rest of the session in the penalty box. Or with the poor eight-year-old who just kind of spent the night ricocheting from one side of the rink to the other in this kind of half-trip, half-skate thing, and then yell out, still alive, as he'd plow into the wall, fall, and try it again. All the while, 
all I can think about is, please don't go down, please don't go down. No one needs to scrape plus size Barbie mom off the ice. <laughs> At the end of the session, I exhaustedly tried to get five grouchy kids back off the ice into the car. Some of them were mad that we had to leave so soon, some still mad that we were there at all. When the event photographer skated up to me and asked if he could take our picture for my husband's company newsletter. Okay. And so I told my kids to smile dang it for their dad who we ditched on the side of the road and pull it together. Four out of five of them gave it their best and put up an amazing fake smile but the nine-year-old refused, crying louder and harder and crumpling down onto the floor of the penalty box behind us, shaking her fist to the heavens and screaming at me, worst night ever, as the photographer said, smile and snapped away. The next day, when that picture came into my inbox from the photographer, I laughed and cried and wanted so badly to be able to show this amazing, cool family night we had. I mean, come on. I'm there with most of the kids, and we're smiling. No one needs to know about the car blowing up, or where my husband was, or about the kid having a meltdown behind me, or the fact that the eight-year-old still isn't convinced that with time and therapy, the blisters will heal and he'll walk normal again. <laughs> if I wanted to, I could fake my way to being a cool mom, and I could just post this on Facebook and sit back while all those likes and those comments on what a cool mom came rolling back in. Hashtag family night. Hashtag blessed. Hashtag best night ever. Except that no amount of online spin could change this night from being what it was. And what it was 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 for me a typical day in motherhood. It is these days when we plan great and days when we just end up shooting from the hip. It's the days when everything goes great and everything totally falls apart. The really great and the totally lousy and everything in between. And it's that wonderful, beautiful, messy amalgam that makes of our, wonderful, our ordinary lives this amazing legacy. And the more I looked at that picture and what I had almost done with it, the more I'm worried that we are losing this. We are losing this legacy of motherhood that is ours as mothers to tell. And in that moment, I realized just how dangerously close I had been to deleting it and deleting my legacy too. When we heavily edit those pictures, or don't share them at all, then our status updates then are reduced to these hollow updates on social media that teach ourselves and our children nothing. And I worry about the days when it's my daughters on the other side of those computers, looking at all of that perfect around them, having their own days, sitting in mom jeans, worrying with their own doubts. What am I as their mother doing for them and for me to help us all see the big picture? I think of those mothers who settled this valley the ones that I looked up to when I'm having these really lousy days. And I look up to them and I admire them and it's not just because they did this really great thing and pulled hand carts across a continent, but it's that I know that they did it in bare feet and burying children and they still kept walking. And it's because I know that they didn't just thrive here in this valley, but they did it in the face of crickets and winter and famine and did it anyway. Their gift to us, their legacy, is that they shared it, all of it. The parts that were wonderful and the parts that broke their hearts, the moments of absolute triumph and the moments of absolute bitter failure. I know this about them because they were brave enough to share it with us. And what we're doing, moms, in our homes and with our families is just as great and just as powerful. And I believe to my core that it will carry our daughters and our granddaughters on those days when they need to look to us for strength, but only if we're brave enough to tell them. It is time for us to get out a notebook, to, to type on a blog, even just grab our smartphones and record our voices as we're driving back and forth to soccer practice and start telling our stories, the whole story, behind those cute hashtag pictures with the great Instagram filter. Each picture, 
each post, each everything that we share of our lives, we have a choice to make. Are we gonna delete everything that is less than what we think is perfect? Or do we get brave and share and leave a legacy? Mothers, it's time to be brave. Hashtag keeping it real.